This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good evening everyone. Shalom Aleichem, Bruchem Abayim. We are continuing in the Shurim on Sefer Vayikra, which are once again generously sponsored by Dr. Zakaim, Umeshpachta, Lila Nishmas, Rosh Shloyma, Eliezer ben Rabbi Yaakov Zakaim, Lila Nishmas, Dr. Zakaim's mother, Rivka Bas Tzvi Halevi, and Rabbi David ben Rabbi Yaakov Tzvi HaKohen, Began Eden, Tehei Menu Chassam. They should be Mlitzay Sharm for the whole family. Arbias Gal Tzedek. The Shurm of Chodesh Adar Beis are dedicated to Ilan Nishmas, Ava, Bat, Ilana Esther, whose yard site is tonight. I just spoke at her yard site. She was a 14 year old girl and uh, she passed away. Yur Ches Adar, that's this evening. Tehei Nishmas Sutsura B'Tzara Chaim. This week's Shur is sponsored by Dr. Zahava Kalfa, Ilan Nishmas, her father. Eliyahu Lilo ben Gezala, whose yard site is Yud Ches Adar, Began Eden Temenu Chasai, should be a male Siyosha for his whole family. Okay, we have uh, very good news. First of all, the uh, Svarim, Svarim update. So we have a Sefer in Lashna Kodesh on Pesach, Nisan Pesach, Haggadah Shal Pesach, that is uh, nearing depletion. It's being reprinted now, Baz Hashem. More will be available. Rosh Chodesh Nisan. If you don't yet have your Haggadah in English, now's the time. Or let's say you have it, but it's still in the bubble wrap. So leave it in the bubble wrap and then get another one that you open. It's always good to have one that remains in the bubble wrap. Because the colors, look how nice the colors are. The blues, they stay very, the colors stay very good in the bubble wrap. Bez Hashem, we're working on a Sefer on Lag Ba'imer. It's, uh, kind of the writing is complete. A third of it has already been submitted, and Bez Hashem, it's on, uh, on schedule. If anybody would like to be Meshtatif, that is still be, uh, available. If anybody wants to participate in the Sefer on Chino Chabonim, you could have your name in it, and it will be there forever. When people will search for your name on Oitzra HaChachma, it will come up, because it's in a Sefer. It's, uh, it's a very big distinction. Um, okay, there's another Sefer. And that's where this uh, tonight share comes in. Bezos Hashem, after the Sefer and Lag Ba'imer. Translation, elucidation, explanation of the Chafetz Chaim Sefer, Tzipisa Li Yeshua. And that's what we're preparing for tonight as we prepare for Chaydash Nisan. So you say, well, next week is closer to Nisan. Yeah, but next week is going to be a very special shear. Next week is a historic shear. Make sure you tell your friends, your family, your neighbors, your cousins your associates, your business partners, anybody you know, go through all your contacts. Make sure everyone is here next Wednesday night. Next week's shir is about the solar eclipse, the historic Erev Pesach solar eclipse. The first time, I don't know if it's the first time, but I don't think it's too common to have a solar eclipse. And New York is in the path of totality, but you might have to go up to Rochester or Buffalo, but we're going to get a good chunk of the eclipse here in New York on Erev Pesach. That will be next week's share. This week's share, we're going to talk about preparing for Nisan. How do you prepare for Nisan? The Gemara tells us in Masech Rosh Hashanah and Daf Yud Aleph. Benisan nigalu, benisan asid and ligal. In the month of Nisan, we're redeemed. In the month of Nisan, we are destined to be redeemed. What co- comes around, goes around. The Jewish calendar is a living calendar. Whatever happened in the past, when that time comes... The spiritual influence and light is reawakened. If Hashem redeemed us the first time in Nisan, He will redeem us again in Nisan. It's interesting, in Rav Schwab's Sefer on Parshas Boy, Rav Schwab is bothered by the following question. What do you mean, Benisan Nigal, Benisan Asid and Nigal? Don't we believe that HaKadosh Baruch Hu could bring Mashiach at any time? Ani Mamin, Be'amunah Shalema, Be'bias HaMashiach, only in Nisan? So right now, we, we don't have to... We don't, we don't have to do that animamin. Now we only have 12. The rest of the year we only have 12 animamins. Only in Nisan, we believe in the coming of Mashiach. Says Rabbi Schwab, Kishazachisi liois mishoivse shabbos eitzal morain hagoin hakadosh hachafetz chayim parshas hachoydesh shnas tafresh sadi. When I had the great merit to be by the holy chafetz chayim, parshas hachoydesh, in the year tafresh sadi. What year is tafresh sadi? 1930. All you do is, here's the formula, you should know by now, you add 1240 for the, to the Jewish date. So 
Tafresh Sadi is 690 at 1240. 1930. Pasach Omar. Belel Shabbos Kodesh. She said this Friday night. Shabbos HaKodesh. Benisa Nigalu Uvenisa Nasidin Ligal. Af Shetzrichim Lechakos Bechol Yom Lebias HaMashiach. Even though we need to await the coming of Mashiach <coughs> every single day, we have to await the coming of Mashiach. Hare Al Pidin Srichim Lezal Yeshua Bechol Chodesh Nisan Kesafek Hashakol Shema Yavai Bechodesh Hazeh Oila Yavai. When it comes to Nisan, it should be 50-50. Of course Mashiach could come tomorrow. He could come right now. Obviously, now, what would we do if Mashiach came now? We would finish the shir, and he would have to wait, and then we would greet Mashiach. That's the halacha. Gadol Talmud Torah, Yoyser Mi Ben Yubes Mikdash. We would not be able to interrupt. Everybody else would interrupt, we would not interrupt, and then when we're finished, Mashiach would say, you did the right thing. You're now to interrupt. Gadol Talmud Torah, so some people say, you know, I wish I lived in the era of Mashiach. If you're learning Torah, you're already the highest madriga, the highest uh, level. There are stories about that, but not now. So the Chavetz Chaim said that when it comes the month of Nisan, it should be 50-50. It should be 50-50. Safek shakol shema yavai b'chaydash zeh oila yavai. Aval chaval shayitzahara oisim is a safik rachik. The yitzahara makes it like you know. So if you ask somebody, what percent do you give it? The Mashiach's going to come in Nissan. I don't know, two and a half percent, point zero four percent. No, Chavetz Chaim said the month of Nissan fifty fifty. So this month of the year, we need to rev up, awaiting the coming of Mashiach. This month of the year, we need to really bring up a notch or many notches, the yearning and the pining for Mashiach. Why not 100%? Why not say, all right, it's coming, this, he's coming, this, this is, so it's coming. There's no, no guarantee. We can't say 100%. We can't be 100% sure. There no, we weren't promised it was going to come, right? We weren't guaranteed it was going to come. But we are guaranteed it will come in, in a Nisan. So we should treat it, especially in Nisan, that's what the Chafetz Chaim said, 50-50. I want to share with you a Pasuk in Safania. The Pasuk says, Lachin chakuli. Therefore, wait for me, Noam Hashem. Liyoyim kumi la'ad. For the day I arise for eternity. Ki mishpati, it will be my judgment, le'esayv goyim, to gather nations, le'kavtsi mamlachais, to bring together kingdoms, lishboi chaleim zami, to pour out my wrath. Kol Kharoinapi, all of my anger, ki beish kinasi, because with the fire of my vengeance, Teachel Kal Aretz, the earth will be consumed. This is the Pasuk of awaiting the coming of Mashiach. This is the most unique Pasuk in the whole Tanakh. What is unique about this Pasuk? It is the only Pasuk in Tanakh that has all twenty two letters of the Alphabes, including Menatzpach. The five final letters. You have the final mem. You have the final nun. You have the final tzadi. You have the final pei. And you have the final chaf. And you have aleph, bez, gimel, dalid, hey, vav, v'chulu, v'chulu. You have all 22 letters of the Aleph Beis plus the five final letters. Well, isn't it interesting? In the Sefer Ber Moshe that my friend Rav Nassim Waldor gave me from his Chavrusa, Rav Leibish Becker, who's the grandson of the Rebbe of Oizorov, the Be'er Moshe, he says in Parshas Vayechi that this is the only Pasuk in Tanakh that has all 22 letters of the Aleph base with the, fa- the end of letters, the Mansapach letters. This teaches us that being Mitzap Eli Yeshua is the Iker and the Tachlis of Kol HaTarakula. So this shows the importance, the centrality, the primacy of awaiting the coming of Mashiach. As we know, in the, the, one of the six primary questions a person will be asked, La'acharmei of Esrim Shana, is, No, Sipisa Eli Yeshua, did you await the coming of Mashiach? 
I always uh, say, you know, we all, we all await the coming of Mashiach. My grandfather, Zeich Hatzak Levracha, he awaited Mashiach like if you would order something on Amazon and they said it was coming Monday or Tuesday and the doorbell rang on Monday, so you think, you know, it's pro- could be it. That's how we had Mashiach. Not like an idea, but as a reality. He said he believed every day in Auschwitz, he believed that Amun Shalema, Mashiach was coming that day. In fact, his final words, he passed away a few years ago on the first day of Pesach, his final words were, my father asked him, Tati, are you okay? And he said, I'm waiting for Mashiach. And then he had Misas Nashika. Those were his last words. So you say, when am I supposed to await the coming of Mashiach? Like when? What time of the day? So I would like to share with you tonight, 13. So why aren't we doing 10? Don't we usually do 10? No, there are no rules. We don't, have to, we don't only have to do 10. It doesn't say anywhere. There's no bylaws that said the shir only could do 10. Sometimes we do 13. So tonight we're going to do, and also Phil, look how nice the 13 fit on the sheet. <laughs> The 10 would have finished. No, the reason is because uh, I had 13. <laughs> oh, there you go. I can't say all the reasons, you know. 13 places in davening where we say, that we are awaiting the coming of Mashiach. And the Chavetz Chaim adjures us, the Chavetz Chaim tells us, you know, you have to be very careful what you say to Hashem. Hashem doesn't tolerate Sheker. You have to be very careful. You know, you know about the four... Tanam, who are Nichnas Lepardes, they entered the mystical orchard, and they were warned, when you get to the blue marble, don't say water, water. Why? You know, blue marble looks like water, but it's not, blue, it's not water, it's blue marble. And if you say a sheker upstairs, you're done, you're finished. One thing God doesn't tolerate is sheker. Is sheker. Now people don't know that. People are mocked on all kinds of things. Heaven forbid, if a crumb of matzah touches water. So what would the gras say? The gras would say, eat it. But nachas v'sham, it's gebraxed. People are very makbed on all kinds of chumras. But sheker, what's that? What's sheker? Sheker is something George Washington didn't do. No, the ikr of the Torah is MS. So you have to be very careful when you express that you're awaiting the coming of Mashiach, that you really mean it. So I want to share with you I'm sure most of these we're all familiar with, but it's worthwhile. Mark in your siddur. These are 13 opportunities to be mekayim, one of the most important avenues of Avedah Sashem, of being mitzap el Yeshua, and especially as the month of Nisan is coming, where the month of Nisan we're awaiting anxiously the coming of Mashiach. We should um, be able to identify and try to even pause momentarily to give these words a little bit more intention and focus. So, number one. Number one's a, a very important thing. Very interesting thing. You know, if you don't have time in the morning to say all the karbanos, minimum, minimum. What's minimum karbanos? Parshas Atamid. You need to say Parshas Atamid. The Shulchan Aruch Harab says, it's an obligation. Many poskim say it's the most important of all the karbanos. Ad kedei kach, Rabbi Yashiv says women must say parshas Atamid. Now I'm not I'm not here for, to tell women to say parshas Atamid. Actually, I am. I'm here to say that women should say parshas Atamid. That's what the poskim say. They say many things. They say um, Tehillim, parak shira, beautiful. Those are all discretionary. Parshas Atamid is obligatory. That's the psaka of the Bir Halacha. So if, the, if you have time to say that. But at the, end, at the introduction to Parshas HaTamid, the, uh, we have a tefillah. We say, Yeratzim al-Fanech Hashem al-Kinu m'kalei avaseinu, Shetarachim aleinu, Shem mercy on us, V'simcha lanu akkochat aseinu, Forgive our sins, V'sachapra lanu akkavan aseinu, V'sisach lanu akkavshainu, V'sivne beis ha-mikdash b'mehera v'yameinu, Please build the base of Migdash speedily in our days. And we should bring before you the carbon tamid. So that's a good time to be Mitzap el Yeshua. I mean, we're saying Hashem, build the base of Migdash. So that's a good time. Pause for 
a nanosecond. How long is a nanosecond exactly? I never knew. It's not a lot of time. What's the difference, just like off the record, anybody know what's the difference between a nanosecond and a millisecond? Just, just out of curiosity. What? Decimals. Okay, that's a good answer. Right? Um, stop and focus. Stop, drop, and focus. We're saying to Hashem, we want to be able to actually be makr of the Tamid. We should be zoicha to see the binyan beis hamikdash. That's number one. That's a good time to accomplish one of the main avenues of Avedah Sashem, to yearn for the Gu'ula, to yearn for the binyan beis hamikdash. Number two, Rabbi Shema Aleimer. Now I like to say Rabbi Shema Aleimer. Why? Because in the base you see the tefillah is a way of progressing from the Ezra's Nashim, which is the beginning of the davening, up the 15 steps, which are the 15 berchas hashachar, into past the Mizbeach, which is Karbanais, and then you go up the 12 steps of the Ulam, plus the platform, that corresponds to Rabbi Shmuel Oimer. So I don't like this Rabbi Shmuel Oimer, because then I feel like I'm jumping, and I'm not going up the steps. But you're not obligated to say Rabbi Shmuel Oimer, that's only if you'll have time to say that, and... All of Sukkot Zimra. But at the end of Rabbi Shmuel Oimer, you say, Yiratsa Milfanecha, Hashem Laikenu, Shei Bane, Beis Hamikdash, Bemehera, Viamenu. I know uh, an Adam Gadol, that when he says the words, Shei Bane, Beis Hamikdash, he says those words out loud, including when he's finishing Shman Esrei. So even though Shman Esrei is silent, when he gets to Yiratsa, Shei Bane, Beis Hamikdash, he says it out loud. I know a Talmud Chacham Muflag that says, I don't know if he says it by Rabbi Shmuel Oimer. I wasn't paying attention um, when he was saying that part, but I, I did hear him a few times say it at the end of Shemana Esrei. But at the end of Rabbi Shmuel Oimer, and by the way, if you mark this down in your Siddur, the, it, it's a very good idea anyway, because it's like it wakes you up. It's very hard to be on high alert the whole davening. I mean, you know, between us friends, it's very hard to be on absolute... So it's, it's important to be able to like identify... Big, jo- big moments in the davening. So here's another opportunity. Number three. When you hear Kaddish, when you hear the words, Yiskadel v'yiskadei Shemei Rabbah. His great name, his name should be made, his great name should be made great and holy. What is this a tefillah for? What are we davening for? That Hashem's great name should be made great and holy. That Rizal says that the Rashi Tevois of Yiskadeh of Yiskadeh Shmei Rabbah Yudvav Shinresh Yoisher that equals 516. Remember that? How many tefillahs did Moshe Rabbeinu daven to enter Eretz Yisrael? 515! Why 515? We once said there's a Medrash that Hashem and His Machana built the first wall of the Beis HaMikdash. That's 103. Avram Avinu built the second wall. That's why he called it Har. That's 205. In Makhlel, 206. Yitzchak called it Sadeh. He built the third wall, 309. Yaakov built the fourth wall. He called it Bayis. Moshe Rabbeinu built the roof. He said, Va'aschanan. Then he wanted the Beis HaMikdash Shomala to come down. God said, Don't you dare say Tefillah 516. Don't say 516. 516 is the tefillah of the coming of the Geula. The Ari says that even though Moshe Rabbeinu was not allowed to say 516, but when we say Yiskadel v'yiskadeh Shmei Rabbah, that's tefillah 516. That's the tefillah of the ultimate magnification of the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Furthermore, Chida writes, when you say Yehei Shmei Rabbah, the Chida says you should be mechavin, that you want to wipe out Amalek, and then God's name will be made whole. Yehei Shmei. Shmei is Shem Ka. Right now God's name is Yud Kei. When Mashiach comes it will be Yud Kei Vav Kei. So when you answer Yehei Shmei Rabbah, it's a tefillah for the coming of Mashiach. So you, you already yearned for it when you said the Parsha Satamid. You yearned for it after Rabbi Shmuel Oimer. And every time you hear Kaddish, what should you think? You should think, I can't wait until the Geula comes. Then, 
That is the 516th tefillah. Then Hashem's name will be made great. Then the Shem Ka will turn into the Shem Havaya. Okay, next. Ready for this? This itself is worth the price of admission. Which wasn't that much. But... Why, why, <laughs> why don't they? Yeah. Because when they, or when they enacted Kaddish, they didn't put in those words. Why? <laughs> why didn't they put in Adoy Noilam? I don't know. But, the, but those words were... Because the words are saying it. Those words were there before. No, they weren't. Why did they take it out? No, the, those words the were never... The Spartan had it before. He had it. No, no. The Spartan had it. They, the Spartan said. Yeah, I can't answer that. But L'chara not. L'chara wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't there. It wasn't? Okay. I want to show with you something very important. We say Psuke de Zimra. We know basically the 13 parts of Psuke de Zimra. You know what they are? There's. How you do? Mizmar la Saida. Yehichavayd. Ashrei. Five Halalukas. Baruch Hashem li Aylam. Vayivarach David. Vicharais. Az Yashir. 13 parts of Psukh de Zimran. is the beginning of the Az Yashir. The two Psukhim before Az Yashir. Okay? But Rabbi Schwab learns that it's broken up into five parts. They are Negadelcha, Nishabechacha, Nifa'ercha, Nazkir Shimcha, Vinam Lichacha. Negadelcha is Haidu. Haidu is a braiding. Okay? We once, if you want to learn about this, we have a series on Tfila. We gave at least a dozen Shirim on what Negadelcha means. Nishabechacha is Ashrei. And we spoke about how Ashrei, sorry about that, Ashrei is Nishabechacha. Nifa'ercha are the halalukas. In a nutshell, how many halalukas are there? Five. Nifa'ercha means the pe'er, the pinnacle of world history. The five halalukas are, speak about the five eras of the pinnacle of world history. They are before the coming of Mashiach. That's where we are now. That's the first haleluka. The coming of Mashiach. That's the second haleluka. The arrival of Mashiach, that's Halas Hashem and Hashemayim, that's the third Haluka. Tchias Hamesim is the fourth Haluka. And the Oilam Hanashamais is the world is the fifth Haluka. The, the, the recitation of the Halalukas are praising Hashem for those great eras in history. Therefore, if you're not sure what to think about the Halalukas, most people, if you would put them in a corner and say, What machshavas did you have when you said the Halukas? They would say, Halalukas? I'm not sure if I said that. Or they would say, Machshava? At the very least, the thoughts by the Halalukah should be yearning for the great eras of Jewish history. Coming of Mashiach, Tchiyas HaMesim, and Olam HaNashamais. The recitation of the Halalukahs is an exercise in awaiting the Geula. It's a complex subject, we have a number of shurim on them in the series of Gateway to Tefillah. But just realize, in other words, if you wanted to write in your Siddur, I'm going to now say the Halalukas for five minutes. I'm going to say hundreds of words. I'm actually not thinking anything. Is there any one central thought that I should be thinking at this time? Yes, the recitation of the Halalukas is yearning for the coming of the end of days. Next. Archa hadaha shal tziyayin tayir we say a new light you should shine on Sion and we should all be zoicha quickly to its light we know what the coming of the Geula the Rebbe Hashem will shine a new light on Sion when you say these words you should yearn for the time where the Rebbe Hashem will bring an Ar Chadash Al Sion Ta'ir should yearn for the Geula this is the close Closing um, phrase of the bracha of Yoytzeh HaMa'orais. A prayer, a request to beseech Hashem for the Orchadosh al Tzion Toyer. Next, Ahav Araba. So you say, Ahav Araba or Ahav Asoylam? That's a, a Berchus HaToyer, isn't it? 
am not I asking Hashem to uh, help me understand Torah? The same Libeno, Lahavin, Ula Haskil, Lashmaya, Lilmoid, Ula Lamed. Yeah, but injected in there is this one phrase. Bring us in peace from the four corners of the world and lead us upright to our land. It's a prayer that Hashem should redeem the Jewish people and we should go to Eretz Yisrael, not horizontal in a coffin. That's also a madrega. That's also better than the alternative. Uh, horizontal is also something. But we're not asking Hashem to bring us to, to, to Har Menuchais or to Har Hazesim. We're asking Hashem to lead us upright <laughs> to Eretz Yisrael. While we're still alive, it's a tefillah for the coming of Mashiach. Fine. Then we have Shemana Esrei. In Shemana Esrei, we have at least six tefillahs for the coming of the Gula. So friends, is it too much to ask that at least once in Shemana Esrei? In other words, you ask most people, what did you think in Shemana Esrei? What do you mean? I had a lot of big kavanas. Yeah, what, what were you thinking? I was asking Hashem for money. No, no, no. That's not what Shemana Esrei. There's purpose of Shemana Esrei. I was asking Him for health. I was asking Him for shiduchim. I was asking Him... No, the main body of Shemana Esrei is request after request after request for the redemption of the Jewish people. Number one, Goyal Yisrael. Re'eva Anyenu, see our affliction. For Riva Riveno, take up our cause. Ugalenu Meher Olaman Shemecha, redeem us for your name. Baruch Atah Hashem, Goyal Yisrael. This is not, yes, it does refer to Jews who are afflicted and persecuted. Hashem should save us. But it's referring to the Geula Shalema. The Gemara Megillah says, why is Goyal Yisrael the seventh bracha? Because the Geula happens Bishnas Shvius. What about number eight? We ask Hashem, blow the great shofar to free us. And raise a banner, Lekabitz Gol Yoseinu, to bring in our exiles. Lekabitzenu Yachad, gather us together, Me'arba Kanfoy Sa'aretz. Baruch Atah Hashem, Mekabitz Nidche Amo Yisrael. He gathers the outcast of Israel. We're basically asking Hashem, Hashem, please remove us from the five towns. Take us out of here, from Cedarhurst, Woodmere, uh, Lawrence, Inwood, and Hewlett. Or if you live in Lakewood, Tom's River, Jackson, help me out here. What are the others? They, they don't have them yet? Sorry. I'm being censored. I'm not going to say right now, okay? Wherever you live, you live in Muncie, you live in Williamsburg, you live in Baltimore. Don't think the bridges anywhere are safe. We're asking Hashem, take us out. Take us out of the Gullus. Gather us from the Gullus. This is a, t- a bakasha, at the very least, to have an awareness. Even if you're not thinking of the meaning of each word, this is a bracha to ask Hashem to take us out. Fine. V'lushalayim yircha barachamim tashuv. We ask Hashem to mercifully return us to Yushalayim. We ask Hashem to dwell in Yushalayim as He spoke, to build it swiftly, eternally in our days. The Chisei David Mehira Lesoi and the throne of David swiftly establish in it. Says the Arizal, when you say the words, Chisei David Avdecha Mehira Lesoi Chatachin, you should. Be mechavin three times a day. We know there's a concept that before Mashiach ben David, there's Mashiach ben Yosef. Mashiach ben Yosef is called Kisei David. Did you know that? David Amelech is the Mashiach. The throne, the preamble, the foundation of Mashiach is Kisei David. So the tefillah of Kisei David is Hashem should bring Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben Yosef should not die. That Rizal writes in the Shara Kavanois on Daf Lamed Zayin. When you say V'chisei David Avdecha, it's a tefillah for Mashiach ben Yosef to survive. Now, you ready for this? Okay. 
Rabbi Gladstein, you have 13 places in tefillah to be mitzapel Yeshua. I could only do one. I am all physically capable only of thinking one. I'm going to be in Shul for an hour. I'm only able to have one, able to have one meaningful thought for that hour. The rest of the time, I'm going to be completely tuned out. Just tell me the one time to be mitzapel Yeshua, okay? No problem. Whatever you want, I'm going to give you the main time. When you say the bracha, es semach David avdecha. The flourishing of David, your servant, mehera satzmiach. Swiftly caused to flourish. The karnoi tarum secha. And his glory you should raise up in your salvation. Ki vishuascha ki vinu kalayam. Because we await your salvation all day long. Says the Ariza on the Shah Kavanois. When you say the words, ki lishuascha ki vinu kalayam, be mechavain to yearn every day for Mashiach. So that after 120, and they put you on trial, and they say, did you await the coming of Mashiach? Yeah, I did it. When? I did it at the uh, most appropriate time, when I said, Ki li that is the targeted, the designated, the most direct impo- uh, interval to await the coming of Mashiach, when you say, Ki li Kivinu kalhayim. You know when you're driving, let's say in a bungalow county parking lot, they put these speed bumps there? Because it's dangerous. You know, their kids, they dart out, and you know, if you're going too fast, you might not stop in time. So there's a speed bump to keep the speed under 20. There needs to be like speed bumps in the Siddur. Before as Semach David, I don't know what you need to do. Take a magic marker, take keys. You know, Victor Miller on Rosh Chodesh, he would put keys in his Siddur I think on the Yalav Yavai. This way, you know, you're in a habit of saying the words. But if you see like, you know, you see a random keychain on the, hey, hey, why are there keys on Eloikeinu Velikei Aviseinu? Ah, maybe because tonight is Rosh Chodesh. You need to do whatever it takes. Put, I don't know what, put a banana on the words, Ki li shuascha kivin kolayon. I could give you many suggestions. An orange, you could take a thing of herring, to put it on the bracha, on the words, ki li shuascha. Rabbi Yitz, do you have any other suggestions? Yes. What do you say? Say, m'msabim li Yeshua. You, say, you could, no, I'm talking about items that you could place on Stick the words. It. Stick it notes. You could put like a flagpole. You could come in with a flag attached to the siddur. Nine foot flag. Do whatever you need to do. To remember, when you get up to the words, ki li shuascha kvinikayam, that Rizal says, that is the designated time to Matzapa the Yeshua. In fact, the Chida writes in the Midrash Kidemois that even if Klal Yisrael only has the zuchus of awaiting the Geula, in the schar of awaiting the Geula alone, even without any other zuchusim, Hashem could redeem us. And the Chida says in the name of Rabbi Yosef David, in the Sefer Tzemach David. The way you read the bracha, Semach David Mehira Satsmiach, Vikarno Tambur Shuasacha, Kili Shuascha Kvinikayam. What does it mean, Kili Shuascha? What do you mean, bring the Geula because we await the Geula? Is that a reason? If, we're, if, if we deserve it, Hashem should bring it even if we're not yearning for it. And if we don't deserve it, how will awaiting it help? But says the Chida, according to what we learned, we say, Hashem, bring Tzmichas David Avdecha. And if you're going to say, but we don't have any merit for it to come, but Ki Li Kivinu, if our only merit is we're awaiting it, that alone is enough of Zuchus for the Yeshua to come. <coughs> I once heard from uh, Rabbi Saul Reisman, who was in our neighborhood just this morning for the bris of, what's the baby's name? Tzvi Rachelsman. Tzvi. Chaim? Tzvi Shimon Rachel's men. And Rabbi Reisman had Kriya shame. He once said that he was standing next to Rabbi Yashiv during Shemana Esrei. And the bracha that Rabbi Yashiv said with the most kavana was the bracha of Hamachazir Shechinasai Litziyayin. He said that Rabbi Yashiv said the Shemana Esrei at a pace. He wasn't marach. But when he got to those words, he said it extra, extra carefully. 
Hamachazir Shechina Soy Letziyayin. And Rabbi Reisman explained because, look, Yerushalayim uh, today is not desolate the way it once was. The old city, the whole city, it's a beautiful city. It's a cosmopolitan city. It's, it's a majestic city. You have beautiful stone everywhere, beautiful shuls. There's only one thing that Yerushalayim is missing, but it's missing everything. It's missing the Shechina. It's saying Shechina Zaza, but Ayin B'Shal Setshuvah Binyan Tzion, that in the second base Hamikdash, there was no Shechina. So what does it mean, Shechina Zaza? Harbe Dargos Shechina Yesh. There are many, many different dimensions of the Shechina. This is another bracha of yearning for the coming of Mashiach. We say, Ritzei Hashem Aleikein Amamcha Yisrael Hashem. Find favor. You should desire Kal Yisrael. The Hashavis Ha'avoidah Levir B'Sacha. Return the Avoidah to the Mikdash. And we say, Let V'Sechazena Eneinu B'Shuvcha L'Tziyon B'Rachamim. Let our eyes behold Hashem's return to Tziyon. Hashem's going back to Tziyon. It's going to happen. But we ask Hashem that we should be the ones to be Zoycha to see it. Baruch Atah Hashem Hamachazir Shechina Asai L'Tziyon. And then... Even though we already said this, Yehiratzen, we said these words already. These exact words we said at the end of Rabbi Shmuel Oimer. This exact three-line tefillah. We say, Nachamal, Yehiratzen, Mufanecha, Hashem Aleikeinu, Velkei Aveseinu, Sheibane, Beis Hamikdash, Bimher Aviyamin. That's another expression of yearning for the Binyan Hamikdash. When the Mashiach does come, so then what happens to the tefillah? What happens to this tefillah? I don't know. What? Say it at the end. What? What do we do? Say it at the end. We'll find out. Bezos Hashem. Elio Anavi will tell us. There are a lot of Jews that, that don't that. Does that hold it back from him coming? Yes. But maybe because we're not fulfilling our responsibility of teaching them how to. So, so that'll never happen, that everybody... Uh, I don't know that everyone has to. How many people have to, to, to come? The Zayar says, all you need is base knishta chada, one, one group of people. Finally, Rabbi Isai, the, the end of the davening, at the end of Aleinu, we say, al Kain, therefore, nekav we await to you, Hashem Aleikeinu, Lirois Mehera B'Sefer Zuzecha, to swiftly see the glory of your strength, Lahavir Gilulim in Aretz, to remove idolatry from the land, Vaha Elilim, Karaisi Karasun, all false gods will be utterly cut off, Lesakein Oilam V'Malchus Shakai, to be Mesake in the world with your Malchus, Vachol B'nei Vasar Yikro V'Shmecha. Says the Helga Chafetz Chaim in the Sefer Tzipis of Yeshua. We know how careful the Torah adjures us to be about Sheker. It doesn't say don't speak Sheker. It says Midvar Sheker Terchak. Meaning even something that's not Sheker Gamor. Even something that's Ktsas Sheker. We're also warned, stay away. And that's if you're talking to a regular person. Imagine if you're talking to Reb Chaim Knievsky. You don't want to tell him a, a white lie, chas v'sham. And what if you're talking to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, says the Chavetz Chaim, how careful you have to be not to say, Sheker, doi v'shkarm lo'ikon l'negen einav. And that's if you don't say that you're going to do something and invoke His name. But imagine if you tell God you're going to do something in His name. And imagine if you use two names of Hashem. And you say, Hashem, Eloikeinu, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And you're lying through your teeth. Not a good idea. Says the Chafetz Chaim, you better be very careful when you say the words, Al-Kain, Nekavalacha, Hashem, Eloikeinu, Lirais Mehera, B'Seferas Uzecha. You better be very careful when you pledge to God with two of His names that you're waiting for Him. Because if you rattle off these words and while you're saying, I can't wait to 
greet Mashiach, you're thinking, I can't wait to get out of shul. That's a no-no. So th- this is an interval that you, you need another speed bump. Because you're pledging to the creator of the universe that you are awaiting His coming and you're pledging it, invoking two names of Hashem. So we have 13 new speed bumps in the davening. And whatever we learned, maybe you could add to it. I have another... I thought of that also in Haidu. We say, Kuma Haishienu Laman Chasecha. In Haidu, Ufedenu Laman Chasecha. We also use many languages, also in the, in the uh, Tachin on Monday and Thursday. These are not the only, only ones. If you want to do more, you, no problem. You're allow, but you're allowed to be Mitzvah Yeshua. The first roughly got to be Yetzirah. Well, maybe. See, there it's just saying Hashem. Does it, you know? He does it. But in a chanami. Friends, these are 13 uh, important intervals where you could be Mekayim, the great Iker, one of the six questions of being Mitzapel Yeshua. They are, again, the Tfila in introduction to the Karban Tamid, the Yehirat sign at the end of Rabbi Shmal Oimer. Every time you hear Kaddish, every time, and you answer Amen Yehishmei Rabbah. The Hallelujahs, which we said are Nifa Ercha, which is a prayer about the five great eras in the end of days. When you say at the end of Yotzer Hamayras, Ar Chada Shal Tziyan Ta'ir. When you say in Ahav Araba, V'Habiyenu L'Shalom Yarba Kanfais Aretz, the Brach of Goyal Yisrael, the Brach of Mekabes Nidche Amal Yisrael, the Brach of Bayne Yerushalayim, the Brach of Matzmiyah Karni Shua, the Brach of Hamach Zershchi Nasser L'Tziyan, the Brach of uh, at the end of Shman Esrei, so just in Shman Esrei alone, you have Re'ei, Tika, Mishalayim, Es Semach, Ritzei, and the Hirat sign. And then you have an Aleinu, Akinikavalacha. Which means, in every Mincha, you have another seven. Shman Esrei and Aleinu. In every Mariv, you have another seven. That's 27 every day. 27 is Gematria. Zach, pure. If you do that 27 times a day, you're going to be very pure. But 13 intervals in Shachras, 7 in Mincha, another 7 in Arvis, and there are many, many others throughout the day in Brachos, and oh, maybe we'll discuss in another occasion. We should be Zoycha as we await and prepare ourselves for the month of Nisan, that in this Nisan, we should utilize the Zman to upgrade our CPL Li Yeshua and we should talk about Zoycha Benisa Nigalu Venisa Nasid Nigal. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by Torahanytime.com.